Welcome to the Skill Stadium Podcast, episode 83. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Keith Williams. Every week, you will hear stories from professionals in the skill trades. We interview business owners, educators, influencers. We interview these folks who are giving real world advice. You know, we don't run any ads on this podcast. So if you found value, please share it. Make sure you leave a five-star review. Just scroll down to the bottom and leave a five-star review. It'll take less than five minutes. Thank you again for tuning in. So today we are going to talk about the opportunities that you may not have known about in the construction industry and what it takes to be hired and what it takes to be successful in this industry. And I've got a guest who's full of great information and some gems. My guest today is from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and he now lives in Greenville, South Carolina. He's the founder and president of Jordan Construction. In 2014, his company won the Minority Business of the Year. And during my guest free time, he enjoys reading. Please welcome James Jordan to the Skill Stadium Podcast. James, how are you this afternoon? Excellent, Mr. Williams. Uh, thank you for that gracious introduction. I appreciate my it. My pleasure. My pleasure. You know, I've I've seen you speaking on YouTube, and you are a you're you're a very talented speaker. You're a great speaker, and so I was also excited about that. Now, is that something? And I never got an opportunity to ask you about that. Is that something that you did Toastmasters? You took courses? Was that something that just really came natural to you? Because I think that's a great skill set to have. Uh, first off, thank you for the kind words. My pleasure. Uh, and again, it's an honor and privilege to be here. I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, for me, the, the speaking and the standing in front of the audience has really started in church. Um, in my, my very early days, we had the opportunities to be able to get up and read a scripture, read a verse. As we got a little older, we got the opportunity to stand and, and do communion or uh, collection or just participate in the service. And that got me more comfortable uh, speaking and at that time as well. We would have talent shows uh, at the church and the youth counselors encouraged me to get involved. And so from there, develop my um, really enjoyment of uh, being able to present to others and share things that I had read and learned. And it went on, I went on from there to get involved with Toastmasters and different speaking organizations and just became really intrigued by it. And following people like Les Brown, the legend, yes, Zig Ziglar and Tony Robbins and, and, and many, many others uh, that are out there that had the opportunity to just pick little things up from along the way. It is definitely a passion in the mind. And I, I love talking about things that serve life, are inspirational and encouraging. And um, I believe that's a big part of the human experience is for us to encourage and, and uplift others. Um and by doing so, we'll continue to learn and grow ourselves. So that's a big part of who I am. No, I agree. I agree. And I think it's such an asset in today's world. Um, you know, especially as a leader, it can have such a profound impact on the people that you lead, you know, in a positive manner. And so, uh, and also I would tell young people and people who are going out into the workforce, having that skill set will be an asset for them getting hired as they compete with others for job opportunities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So tell me, you know, one of the things I know, you're a successful business owner, you're heavily engaged in your community, but yet you still find time to read and learn things. Why is that? Please share why that's important. For me, the love for reading started when uh, my father, uh, <laughs> funny story, he used to give us books for Christmas. And there was always, uh, you know, he would always say, I need you to be hungry for information and seeking out knowledge. And so for me, it became an opportunity to be able to just visit different worlds without ever having to leave my bedroom. Um, it gave me an opportunity just to dream and to think about what could be and to have this expansive imagination, uh, which just have served me well, I believe, and just other facets of my life. Uh, so it's important for me to read and, and not just uh, things that are just about business, uh, but things about different cultures and understanding history uh, and believe heavily in being well-rounded. 
And then on the business side, so many things change so very quickly in business. So much new information is coming out. I believe that we don't ever want to be stagnant, that we always want to be growing, evolving, learning and changing. And one way to do that uh, is just through reading um, and constantly educating ourselves. And, uh, you know, it, it also just gives me a sense of peace. Um, I'm still old school. Uh, maybe some would call it old school, but I, I like a paperback oh, yeah. and to be able to pick it up and <laughs> yeah. and to be able to flip the pages up. It's just something that's special about that uh, to me. I pull out my highlighter, I pull out my pen, I make notes, and uh, it's just an exercise I've been doing since I was a young man and uh, really enjoy it. Younger, man. You're still a young man, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say this i i am big on 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 reading too and i do have a highlighter and i, I am old school part of it for me why i want to have a book in hand is i i have young children 13 and 11 and i'm preaching to them about reading and i can't tell yeah. them to do something that i'm not doing so i feel like you've got to set yeah. that example so when i tell my son hey yeah. i need you reading some more books I, you know, I, I have to set the example. So I agree with you on that. And also I, I learn better when I highlight stuff and I go over it again. And that's, you know, here's something I think that we should all be doing when we're reading is maybe start doing like book reports. Maybe, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but just yeah. writing up yeah. what you learned and, and that. I, I, absolutely. And in a sense I do, uh, that's when I'm taking my notes and writing my takeaways um, in a sense, that's you know what I'm doing. It's amazing to me, you know. For you take any Ivy League school, I was blown away when I went to Clemson and saw the size of uh, uh, their library as well. Uh, but for any Ivy League school that you even want to look at, you can go online and look at the different courses that they offer and see the books. And the we. It, as a general public, we have access to those same books and to that same information. Uh, so for anything that we want to do just about, there's some information out there where we can read and learn more. Um, the thing I was impressed with at Clemson when I walked the uh, different aisles of that library was just how many different books and how much information. And uh, it, it was really just a very special experience. Mm -hmm. uh, just to see that, you know, there's so much out there for us to learn and to be able to take in. So it's it's a constant journey. I don't think you ever arrive uh, there being all knowing and uh, and it's fun. You know, it, it's it's amazing that you're talking about the libraries because of how technology, how we have so much access to the Internet and information it's amazing to see how the libraries all these years later are still relevant. I remember when I was a kid and we had encyclopedias and I loved encyclopedias. Yes. They were expensive. You, yes. know? <laughs> you had yes. a set that was like over 10 years old and your parents wouldn't update it because they're like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> like they invest, I have parents who are educators, so they didn't mind investing in books, even though it was expensive to buy encyclopedias. But uh, they weren't about to update them, you know, just because it's 10 years old. They're like, you got to have to continue to use that. That's funny, yeah. uh, Mr. Williams. You just brought back a memory for us that mom would drop us off at the library. Yes. And she wouldn't come back to pick us up for hours. And we had to stay there and uh, just we, you could get a book. At that time, you had different activities and things around that you could move around the library and do. But yes. uh, no, we, we were hanging out at the library as kids. And so maybe that's where some of that love for uh, information and reading came from as well. Yeah, Definitely. Thank nothing, you, wrong, nothing wrong with that. Hey, now <laughs> you took your skills and, you know, you had a skills trades and you, you know, you, uh, you did a different path. You were in an environment where the majority of students were going to college, yet you took a different path. Can you talk about that? Because you, you did the skilled trades path and then went on to college. Can you tell us about that experience? I, absolutely. Um, so for me coming out of this, despite my love for information and reading, um, coming out of high school, I wasn't exactly sure of what it is that I wanted to do and had an opportunity uh, through Harley Davidson to get involved in a young machinist program. 
And in that program, I was able to go through a 12-week certificate program to learn how to be a CNC operator. And at the capstone of that uh, program, um, I was able to graduate and get a job at Harley-Davidson. Nice. Which, by the way, paid for my education to be able to go back to technical college, continue my education before I went on to Marquette. Um, but the thing that I took away from my time there is that, one, um, I've always been that kind of learner that I like to hear the um, oh, the theory. But then for me to really get it, I need to go and be hands on. Mm-hmm. And then it really sticks. And um, I come from a family of builders and, and, and people that I like and enjoyed working with their hands in addition to their minds. And. So it was just a, it was a natural fit for me and something that I really uh, just engaged in. And it gave me opportunity to do a few things. One, to get a skill that I felt like I could use uh, anywhere that I want to go in the country. So I wasn't just locked into a certain geography. Um, it gave me a marketable skill that I knew that Harley Davidson was looking for right away uh, and several other organizations. But Harley was the one that I decided to go with. Um, and, and then it also just gave me something that I could I could build on. So it just gave me a foundation that if I want to take CNC machining to the next level or go into a different trade, whether it be electrical or plumbing or carpentry or uh, just one of the various trades uh, that I had the foundation there as well to be able to keep going while I was trying to figure out what else it is that I, I wanted to do. Um, I, I was able to get a, a lot of one-on-one attention because that's part of the trade school, I think. And for me, in my learning style at that time, I really needed that. Uh, it helped me build my confidence as well. That, that was a, a big thing I have to mention. Um, coming out of high school, I needed something to help me build my confidence. And it was a way to get a win and uh, be able to, you know, frankly, Mr. Williams, step into for me as an 18 year old was a very lucrative lucrative uh career um uh, that had uh, being a machinist we at that time had great health benefits um had very good pay and uh, really put me in a position to be able to do a lot of things Uh, and i'm eternally grateful for that opportunity definitely And, and you know what i'll say you know starting your career at 18 it helps you develop skill sets and good habits, you know, under a good company and having some good leadership there, you know, so that, that definitely, I'm sure certainly was a benefit to you when most people are 18 are just really trying to figure out, figure things out there, you know, uh, so there's a major benefit in the folk there had an open door policy, where they let me come in and ask questions and just do discovery and explore, um, yeah, I, I don't know where I would have been without that opportunity to be able to grow in, and mature in that kind of safe environment. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that that has had influence on you now, even as you seeing as you talk to younger people and you're now a role model to, to them. And so. It's had a lot of impact on me. Uh, the program has so much of an impact on me that here at, as a company at Jordan Construction, we offer tuition reimbursement. We encourage our uh, team members to go and get the credentials to be very marketable for themselves. Not credentials for us, but credentials that we'll pay for that you can put on your resume. So as you get ready for the next step in your journey, you're that much more ready for a competitive market. Um, We hope that you stay, but if you do decide to leave, we want you to definitely be better for the time that you have spent with us that was my experience. That was the opportunity that was extended to me. And uh, at the time, I decided to go back to school for business and they supported me in that. And I just I, I know the world of difference that that meant for me and for my family. And so uh, it's, it's one of our core values here as a company is just continuous education and learning. And we definitely want to support people in that. And I'm very proud to say and we just had the conversation earlier this afternoon about how many people have signed up uh, for some of these educational certificate opportunities and to go out and get credentials uh, to just ensure that 
that, that when we come to the table uh, that we can put uh, our learning and our education and our certifications on the table. And there's no question about our capabilities uh, or competence at all. I think that says a lot about your culture. That That's impressive. And I think people are going to want to stay more than anything because everybody doesn't do that. And and uh, when you invest in people, they recognize that, you know, it's, we, we talked about it before. It's not, you know, it, it doesn't take any more effort to treat people well. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, That's right. So That's right. I, I applaud you yeah. for that. That, that definitely is definitely um, speaks well to your culture. Hey, what advice would you give for high school students? You know, they're finishing up high school and they want to prepare for a career in construction. What advice would you give them to help them prepare for that career? Absolutely. Well, my first advice to them on a personal level, um, regardless of what career that they want to get into, is to sit down and, and, and just go crazy on a piece of paper or on your iPad or your phone, however, whatever your method is, and write out whatever that big dream is that you have. Really think about that big, big, wild, audacious, crazy dream that you have and it might seem crazy now the crazier it seems the bigger it seems the bigger it is the better and and then uh, take a step back for a moment and then write out your three goals your three main goals that are going to need to be accomplished in order to get closer to that big dream uh, and then break it down a step further and write down what you're going to do this month three things that you're going to do this month in order to get closer to one of those goals and then take it one step further and write down three things that you can do on a daily basis to get closer to that goal. Um, so if that you know, is a health goal or if it's a spiritual goal or if it's a business goal, uh, one thing that's just been very important to us and we still practice it around here and been doing it for a while now is to every day when we wake up to just be operating with a sense of purpose and knowing exactly what you need to do in order to like a navigation system. You know, you, you put that address in MapQuest or whatever navigation system you use and you set that destination in that route. Um, and then the other piece to that that I need to add, though, is to be um, empathetic with yourself that if you missed the mark today, that that's OK. I can get back up and go after it again tomorrow. And then sometimes, you know, the, the path, uh, it changes and that's OK as well. Uh, going specifically into construction, um, I, I encourage, I encourage, please. Uh, we're here. We're in the community. Uh, a big part of us being in this community, Mr. Williams, is I want students to be able to get very familiar with the construction industry. Uh, so we make ourselves available, myself and team, to be reached out to for people to stop by and do a look and see. Uh, when we have project sites that are in the area to be able to come out to one of the project sites and just get more of a feel for what we do in the different types of careers. And there's so many of them, the different types of careers in construction. And that could be everything, you know, from laborers. And I mentioned some of the different trades earlier all the way to um, construction management. Um, and th there's no, they're, they're all critically <laughs> important in the process. And uh, if you don't think they are, try building the building without the right foundation guy. Yeah, yeah. Is as equally as important oh, yeah. as the, the project manager. So um, the, the, the next step, I think, and there's so much information out there, uh, is, is just to, start to uh, get on a search for information and, you know, just reading about some of the different careers and the opportunities in the construction. Greenville Tech has some fantastic programs. And even as a high school student, you can start asking questions about what programs they have and what kind of certificates and things like that uh, are, are available. Um, there's so many resources in, in our community, you know, the ABC Contractors have a school, the National Builders Association. Um, be bold, be bold. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask questions. Um, the bolder, the better. Uh, the, the, the people that you know, 
email and you think might not respond, send them that email anyway. Um, and, and take that time really to invest in yourself um, to ask some of those questions to start building kind of a framework for what it is that you might want to do. Um, sometimes things seem really difficult when you can't visualize them. And again, a big part of us being here in this community is that we did want to be an example of a model of how to build a business, how to care for a community, um, how to operate in the construction industry. And our hope was that we would get people that ask questions, uh, that we would have team members that go on to do just various things in different trades in the construction industry um, and, and, and that, that we can be a ecosystem that people can use and, and have really as a springboard to go into whatever career they want to go into in the, the uh, construction trades or in business. Mm -hmm. No, I, I definitely, I definitely agree with you on that. Cause I also feel like young people have an advantage in that people are very willing to help a young person because it's not very often that young people are bold enough to ask questions to adults. It's just yeah. when I was young and yeah. I'm sure, it's just, you know, some, some young people are just, it's not in their nature and we're willing to help them out. Like the older generation understands, they know they've been down that path. So I, I like that advice. I think that's solid. If they reach out, people will help them. Uh, I think people have become, you know, since the pandemic, we've, as a society, people are more willing to help people. Um, I just think, especially if you're young. Um, I'm, I'm so glad you said that. And uh, I, I was having a conversation with a business mentor. And I remember when I was, 15 years old and he had a, a, a pretty significant company in the city that I grew up in and he knew that I had business interests. I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. I know sometimes we laugh about it now that my ideas were uh, uh, you know, not all the way packaged and but I was trying to figure it out but he would invite me in and when he would have board meetings with his company and his wow. staff, he would say, you know, we're going to take the first 10 minutes and then, James, you're on. Give us your presentation. Nice. <laughs> and, they would ask and, they would, and they would help me just, you know, polish uh, myself. And, 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 you know, and they were, they were a very uh, kind about how they approached nobody. Uh, you know, hurt my feelings as, but they were helpful. Yes, they were still helpful. They weren't um, uh, by any way trying to give me any uh, misinformation. They were really just trying to help. And there's so many others along the way that I could point to. To your point, that I was able to ask for help uh, and still do, and still do. So our conversation even yesterday, now uh, almost 30 years later. We're still having conversations about the next step because then these things constantly just evolve and change, as you know. No, I hear you. Um, everybody needs help at some point. I know I've changed careers uh, as an adult and people help me. It, it, you never stop needing help from others. You know, nothing is achieved Amen. by yourself. I mean, I think faith Amen. in God and, and having good people around you. Uh, I, I just, I don't believe anything is done just solely on your own. I just, you know, That's as you're right. a business owner, you already know that. So, um, yeah. That's right. Hey, um, tell me something. How did you, you know, I, I saw that you were on 60 minutes. How did that happen? Can you share? Uh, absolutely. So it's, it's funny because when I first got the email uh, about 60 minutes, um, I didn't believe it. I was just, Get ready to get on the plane. I was headed to uh, Palm Desert, California for an Ernst & Young event. And uh, I, I thought it was one of those spam emails. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't delete it. <laughs> <laughs> the importance of curiosity so, uh, and having an open mind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Having an open mind. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, so um, my, I forwarded the email to my assistant. She reached out and called me back and said, no, James, this is, this is legit. And uh, the way that they came to know us was through our, our good friends at the chamber. 
Um, the Greenville Chamber, by the way, is an incredible resource in this community. Yes. Uh, we were a part of the uh, inaugural Minority Business Accelerator class. Uh, it really is just some phenomenal people. And there's uh, so many I can name that have been instrumental in our journey uh, through the Minority Business Accelerator program and also from that, the Greenville Chamber. Uh, really proud of the work that they do here and how forward thinking they are. Uh, uh, led by Mr. Carlos Phillips and the chamber told him about us and how we were you know, growing and, and, and also at the same time experiencing or in a market where uh, there are labor challenges. We need more skilled labor, uh, more people that want to be in the construction industry. It's, it's needed. And frankly, right now, you know, Mr. Williams, people command a premium that has skills in this market. And I think it's gonna be that way for a while. Um, so it's a good time to be going into skill trades. Um, but they they wanted to have a conversation about being in a city like Greenville that is growing uh, in leaps and bounds and how many people are migrating to our area that's uh, uh, causing this growth and also uh, how we're dealing with, with some of the labor challenges. Um, Incredible experience, incredible experience. We've received emails from around, literally around the world, uh, hundreds of applications uh, that the team has been processing and responding to about job opportunities, about project opportunities, uh, just about having conversations and, and, and people that are looking to grow their business as well. So, uh, so thankful uh, for having that opportunity. It was definitely a, a, a once in a lifetime experience. Definitely. Uh, and then the other cool part was I heard from people that I hadn't heard from in, in many, many years, like my high yeah. school uh, teachers and my wrestling coach and folks like that, that it, it was just very special to hear from. Definitely. Definitely. Well, 60 minutes is big time. So, uh, you know, you're definitely going to get a lot of attention being on 60 minutes. Um Parents, teachers, guidance counselors, they've got a great deal of influence on children's careers. How do we connect with those folks? How do we connect with them? How do we, how do we connect with these important influencers to show them the opportunities that exist in construction? How do we connect with the, the parents? Yes. Yeah, so the parents and the, and the educators, because they are the ones influencing the students. And so I believe absolutely, that. absolutely. Um, so uh, it, what big for us is getting outside of the four walls. Um, it, we 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 can't stay in our offices and expect things to change. Um, like you do so much, and I give you so much credit. And what we really work on is getting involved in as many local organizations as we can. We have to get on, on the ground and go visit the schools and go talk to them. Um, we have to go to the career days. Um, you know, we, we have to be out in, in the community just really um, waving the flag and, and, and putting out the need, talking about the need uh, for folks to be able to go in, in, into these trades. Um, and not... We also just have to lead by uh, example, and that might sound kind of cliche, but what I mean by that um, is you know, any opportunity that we have on our social media to really tell our story, it's incumbent on us to do that. And my hope in sharing that is it's not uh, in any way self-serving because that's just not who we are. It's not a pride thing. Uh, it's really... The more that we can share our story, hopefully we can be an influence and have an impact uh, for others. Um, I, I'll tell you, growing up uh, as a young man in, in uh, Wisconsin, I would get Black Enterprise magazine and I would read about this man named Herman Russell uh, that owned H.J. Russell Construction um, in Atlanta, Georgia. And I would read about the size of the contracts that they were doing in it impacted me greatly. And honestly, I, at that time in the place where I was from, I just had not seen yes. a minority contractor that had done things on that scale. I didn't know it existed until I did. Yes. And uh, it, it, it inspired me. It, it really did. And 
Um, I just shared a post with him about him recently on LinkedIn, and I just have just a tremendous amount of respect and gratitude for the way that he lived his life and, you know, and, and thankful for him telling his story. Um, so I, anyway, I, I think that is very important when we get those opportunities. Conversations like this, uh, so proud of you for what you're doing and, and the message that you're sharing. Uh, because it, it, it does. This all makes a difference. I don't think it's one singular thing. I think it's all of those things and more. I agree. hundred percent, hundred percent. So what, so people who are working in your industry, and I think this is important for people to understand what makes somebody an elite performer? Because, you know, I think it's important if I'm doing a job, especially if you're new, what, what's going to make me be someone who performs well and what do they do differently? And how do you measure that? Yeah, yeah. Great question. Um, big question. And I, I, I've seen it show up so many different ways. But that that there's a special thing that some people have. And uh, we can call it the it. Uh, we can call it just a, a hunger or just a strong desire. Um, just that ability to be just so relentless and persistence in the pursuit of certain things, not reckless, but just that really that drive. Um, and I've seen it show up in certain people in the trades that they, they want to dig into those, that information or those blueprints and they want to understand those things inside and out. Or if you wake them up in the middle of the night and ask them a question about their project, even if it's something that's outside of their area of responsibility, they've studied up on it and are curious about, OK, well, what does this notation mean or what does this other thing mean? They're not waiting on somebody to ask them the question. They're asking themselves yes. some of the tough questions yeah. and just having that natural curiosity. And I see that propel people so much further, so much faster and uh, is, is being proactive is being proactive and, and um, trying to um, elevate yourself uh, before you know, somebody comes along and, and elevates you. I, I think uh, not getting caught up on the dollars initially yes. is, is important. I, I think learning the way, developing um, your skill set, getting the, the the information, the model for how to do something mm -hmm. is so much imp more important initially and the, the dollars will come later. Sure. Uh, I, I, I believe that uh, you, you get the dollars when you've achieved your, the mastery of your craft. Mm -hmm. uh, but early on, just work on just getting the mastery of the craft. Um, you know, there's were several projects that we were involved in where Early days, I just shadowed or I interned, and uh, a lot of it was you know, very hard work in that beginning. Uh, but it, it was teaching me how to be in the field and what things to look out for, and just how to work at each stage and level in the process um, along that way, and just really being a, a, a sponge. Um, uh, I'm big on writing too. So yes. uh, taking notes and documenting what you're seeing, even if you don't know what it means today, it's always interesting to me to go back and look at old notes and then the dots connect. Mm -hmm. You know, this day I didn't, I didn't have the other dot to connect to this dot, but I just wrote down the piece of information that I did get. And later on it, it, it made more sense at the right time. Uh, so I, I, I the last piece that I'll add, because I think it, it or just tie a bow on it, is you know, it, 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 it takes time to grow into something. Yes. Um, a lot of times we want to be there yesterday. And we'll, I, I really believe that we have to be patient with ourselves and going through our process, not compared to anybody else, but just really keeping our eyes on our path and saying, OK, just like I was saying before, let me ensure that I'm doing the things I need to do each day in order to get better. And somebody else may be getting faster, 
uh, but they don't matter. It doesn't matter. Stay on your path and your journey and we'll get there. Yeah. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Endurance. Hey, you know, so one of the things I want to talk to you about is with my platform, Skill Stadium, we have job seekers create 30 second elevator pitch to video. And then sometimes they yeah. can create like 60 second videos of them demonstrating their skills and knowledge. I'm curious how would that help a company like you? Do you see value when you're evaluating uh, talent, like using video and technology to figure out who you're bringing in to interview? Uh, absolutely. I think it's a wonderful idea. And I think that um, uh, for us, that the, the video can give you uh, more of a sense of who somebody is versus yes. just looking at just a resume. Um, I'm, I'm glad you made that point. I think the video in any business, but particularly ours, what we look for is uh, a certain soft skill or bedside manner. And, and to make it plain, um, it was great to be smart, but then it's also very, very important to us to have um, some um, EQ, emotional, yes, uh, uh, you know, that emotional intelligence. Um, and to be, uh, compassionate, uh, that can come through when you're in a video because just to have a certain skill set, but not be able to, uh, deliver or, uh, articulate it or to have that human piece to you when you'll likely be, you're going to be on a team when you're in the, in the trades and on the construction project. Uh, so it's very important to have um, that ability to be able to work well uh, with others, I think, and that you maybe interfacing with the customer even more so yeah. than the president of the company yeah. mm -hmm. when you're working on a job site. So again, it's important just as a brand that we are finding people that have um, the um, that right emotional intelligence, the right humility, yes. uh, and just are the cultural fit. And I think that you can get some of that uh, from the video. Um, I think we can get some of that taking it to the next step when we do the Zoom interviews. Um, it's just, for me, it's still nothing like that face-to-face -face interaction. That's that last step to really just get a sense of who somebody is and as we're evaluating them. And, and and they're evaluating us, you know, yes. it's an important choice, a career choice. They're evaluating us even to see if we are the right cultural fit uh, for them and for, for their path. Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. Hey, can you share three resources, um, whether it be a website, YouTube channel, a social media posts for people who would want to learn more about construction? Absolutely. Uh, the, the first one that has been absolutely essential in our growth, uh, two that I'll name here, is the SBDC. They're the Small Business Development Center. Okay. And they are located all throughout the state of South Carolina. Uh, their office in Green for Greenville is located downtown Greenville in the one building. This organization is an organization that helps uh, business owners, they help people that are seeking careers. They provide free information to help you build your business plan, to help get you on the path to your career goal, uh, to be a sounding board, uh, to help you if you are going into business, to be able to put your financials together. Um, if you are, you know, if you do have a big dream, they are that organization that can help you connect some dots. Uh, so the SBDC, again, Small Business Development Center, uh, is an incredible resource here in our state. And they've done some tremendous work uh, and, again, been extremely valuable to us. Uh, the other big one is the Small Business Administration. Please go check them out. The SBA, um, they're on the web, of course, but their South Carolina office is located in Columbia, the SBA is a government-funded agency, and 
they do so much work on not just helping small businesses, but also connecting uh, people that are looking for opportunities with small businesses. Uh, so through the Small Business Administration, we were able to find a mentor. Uh, we were able to find people to talk to on uh, a regular basis on various topics. And they hold educational classes. Before the pandemic, they used to hold them in person. Now everything is virtual, uh, but they are uh, an, an amazing uh, resource. Um, I talked a little earlier about the National Builders Association. I talked about ABC. Um, and then I also spoke about the Greenville Chamber. Um, uh, and well, great partner for us, depending on where you're located uh, here, the different cities have chambers as well. And I highly encourage people to get involved with their local chambers. Um, and there's for high school students, the Greenville Chamber ha does a great job. They have the uh, launch program that uh, GBL launch, I believe is the name of it. And high school students can sign up to GBL launch and be paired up with companies that are looking for um, people with their skill sets. So we'll host high school students this summer that are interested in construction through the GVL launch program. Very excited about that. That's good. Uh, final question. Share one lesson that you have learned that can help someone who's just starting their career in construction. Um, several lessons I've learned that can help someone starting their career in construction. Um, being the uh, apprentice is extremely important. Again, standing shoulder to shoulder with somebody that has been there, has done it, can teach you uh, just the different facets of construction because there's so many different facets depending on what you can want to do from holding the tape measure to being great on the computer to doing design uh, to even being involved, you know, in different aspects. I have a great friend that uh, just had a love for architecture and he's still involved in construction, but uh, he's on the design side um, and he, he enjoys it. And I think the things that he does are very cool. And he's another one that's just a great resource and willing uh, to, to definitely allow people to shadow him. But finding that right mentor initially, asking those questions um, is extremely important. The other thing I think for me, just as a, a really a global uh, piece of advice is that just not to stop. Don't be discouraged. If you don't get a response on that first outreach, please yes. don't stop. Yes, keep I going, agree. keep going. Um, you know, Mr. Williams, I think we talked about this in our first conversation, but uh, you know, failure is not final. Yes, failure really. is not final. Even and, and, and sometimes the things that we view as failures are not even failures. They're just setting us up for a great comeback and a, a major learning lesson for the future. Um, so keep that hunger, keep that desire, keep that appetite to learn. I strongly encourage you to uh, just research and uh, get your presentation together. And, and, and But don't feel like you have to have everything figured out before you make your ask or decide to explore more uh, mm -hmm. about a certain path. Uh, you know, st have, have some faith. Just step out there. Don't say I got to get this together and that together. No, just, just, just go, just go. And uh, you know, I, I think you could share too that with the podcast. At some point, you just decided uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go. <laughs> oh yes, yes. And, you know, and, and, and it's turned into an amazing thing. So thank you. Uh, those, those leaps of faith are extremely important. Yes. And, I, and I'll say this, James, just to touch on what you said. Uh, one of the things I liked is you said when you don't get a response to continue, you know, and I've seen that happen in my life, reaching out to people. And I have a lot of experience, more experience than some of these young people. And that advice is so true. There are people who've reached out to me and I haven't responded right away. I'm sure the same has happened to you. And I'm Absolutely. sure sometimes it just takes a little while to get back to people. And right. um I can attest, I did not know you and I reached out to you and you 
and here we are, <laughs> you know, so having a conversation. So it does work, people, and uh, you do have to have faith. And, you know, when I reached out to you, I had no idea whether you'd respond or not, you know, but I said, I'm going to go on faith and we'll see where it, where things take us. And hello yes, and behold, here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yes. Here Final are. question, you. are you hiring? Do you want to share anything about you guys hiring right now or any opportunities? Yes, there? absolutely. We are hiring. Um, please visit us at JCC Contractors with an S dot com. JCC Contractors dot com uh, is our website. We have a tab there to be able to apply for a job. We are also on LinkedIn. We're on Instagram. Uh, we're on Facebook. Jordan Construction Company, uh, J-O-R-D-O-N Construction Company. Uh, we are always looking for the best talent. Uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. We would love to meet you, have a chance to speak with you. We are right here. We're active in the community, and you know, we welcome the opportunity to uh, to talk to people and uh, and hopefully help and be able to continue to grow. Excellent. I'm gonna put you on the spot quickly. Are you open to yeah. allowing people to shadow just so they can learn a little bit about the company? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. We welcome the opportunity to be able to shadow. Um, we have a special culture here. And uh, Ms. Williams, some of the things that we talked about during our time together today, uh, the, the, the people on the team understand that there's been somebody that's been special in their life that's given them some time sure. to and invested in them to help them get to where they are. Uh, so, you know, as, as part of our core values, um, it's, it's important to us to invest back in others as well. Uh, and, and at the same time, we're growing. You know, we, we might start off some time thinking somebody's going to shadow us and then they teach us something. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great day for all. <laughs> yeah. Well, James, I, I want to mention that again to the listeners. They are open to people coming in, shadowing. Guys, folks, that is powerful. That is, please, please take advantage of that. That is an opportunity of a lifetime because most companies do not do that. It's like you're getting to test drive the company before Absolutely. you before you actually make that commitment. Uh, I think that's good for both sides. So. If you're interested in construction and you live in Greenville, please check them out. And I will have notes in the um, in the notes. I'll have all your information, by the way, in the um, notes of the podcast, so people will be able to uh, to, awesome. to know all about how to locate you and how to find you. Well, James, I thank you so much for your time, and I wish you a thank wonderful you. afternoon and continued thank success. Thank you for the great work you're doing. I appreciate you. My pleasure.